Hi guys, small update on the markets. I want to add some information that uh, I shared about investing in nuclear energy, but also on the latest video I made about investing in cryptos and where we are in the cycle. Uh, and a few things I forgot to say, and also uh, the feedback I got in the comments, especially about the nuclear energy, was very interesting. Um, so first, crypto. Um, so the last video was uh, about uh, the chart where crypto was overvalued by 200% compared to its fair val historical value. And um, would we go down or up? And I, I think the most important thing I forgot to say there was that I, I, I was pretty bearish. Eh? Of course, every analysis is colored and mine is always colored and often wrongly colored. I'm thinking it's bearish, but actually it ends up going up. Or I'm thinking it's bullish and it ends up going down. So um, uh, uh, this is of course the whole point of doing analysis. You're right about the trend. And, um, and, and so I think I might have been very wrong about the trend. My, the title of my video was don't end, underestimate a bear uh, and don't bully other projects pretty sure about the bullying part that that's never a good thing uh, pretty sure that Bitcoin cash is a very very good investment and will in the long term become bigger than Bitcoin but I'm certainly not I don't feel certain at all about whether we're going to go up or down uh, but actually the one thing I forgot to say there is that what's very bullish for this market in crypto still is that the cycles are becoming longer and longer and the period of overvaluation was only half a year in 2011 but was a year and a half in 2013 uh, and and so the undervaluation period was also only half a year in 2012 and was also a year and a half in 2014-15 so so these periods are becoming longer and now we just started the period of overvaluation again, only half a year in. Uh, of course, prices have been going up a lot longer. It's for three years. Prices have been going up since early 2015, 15, 16, 17, three years. Prices have been going up, but the period of overvaluation was not reached in 2015 and 16. That was still a period of undervaluation. Uh, the period of overvaluation only started in 2017 and actually only at the middle if you compare it to the fair value uh, of Trollo's chart and so we're only half a year in of overvaluation it will likely take a lot longer now than one year and a half because cycles seem to be longer so it will probably be like two years three years of overvaluation now and that means that it is extremely unlikely that we get a long-term bear market already from that point of view um, and so and, and there are some other indicators also that um, we might get a third leg up here uh, and we might go this year to 40 50 thousand for Bitcoin US dollars and total market cap to 1.5 uh, trillion and we're currently at 400 billion so that's times four from here um, I actually think I give that the highest odds. I said them in a previous video in the commentary, I give that 50-50, but I would maybe say 60-40 yeah? that we go a third leg up simply because of this argument that the period of overvaluation will very likely take a couple of years and after that it will take uh, also two, three years of undervaluation. But so we can't go in a bear market now and see... We can't go in a long-term bear market the way we've seen it in 2014. Uh, that was one year of dropping, 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 dropping. Uh, uh, and so we would get this, if we get this now, um, yeah, it would be very painful. Um, but so, that's one point. Um, And then there's the stock market that has a very big influence on this and the stock market um, has been going up for nine years many people think that a correction is due and that's certainly possible a year of correction but um, 
the stock market was a really terrible investment from 2000 till 2010. Uh, and that's 10 years. Huh? That if you invest in the stock market index in 2000, well, in 2010, you had the same nominal value in US dollars or euros that you invested after 10 years. Inflation is 5% per year, so in inflation adjusted you were down by 30, 40% after investing for 10 years in the stock market. This is very rare. It only happens every 30 years. It happened also in the 70s, but then after that, yeah, 80s, 90s, uh, 20 years of going up. Um, so usually it's like seven years, bad market, uh, 20, 25 years, very good market. And so we just had uh, seven years, uh, I mean, it was eight years ago that we had a decade of very bad stock market. So are we due for another decade of so very bad stock market? No, no, it will take another decade of good stock markets before we will have another decade of bad stock markets. So this means that we may get a correction in the stock market in 2018, um, uh, but if it happens, it will be likely a, strong, uh, a short one, like in 1987, we also had a year of correction, or in, was it 1992? Yes, but this was all in a multi-decade long bull market. So uh, stock market continued to be an extremely good investment uh, during the 80s and 90s. And, and so I, I, I think this is, will be the case again for the stock market. So stock market looks extremely bullish even though it's been going up for nine years and a small correction is as expected and that could be this year 2018. But after that it will continue to go up a lot. And that's the most likely. And I think crypto markets will be heavily influenced more and more by just the general economic climate. and. And, and so the biggest risk for a crypto market is a, a serious stock market correction. And many people think money will overflow then into a crypto markets, but the inverse is true. If stock markets correct strongly, crypto markets will also see a very strong correction because crypto is high risk, uh, what is perceived as a high risk investment. And so only when people do well in stock market, real estate, then they have some extra money to blow and they are, um, in a risk on mentality they're making money by taking risks so they want to take more risks so they're going to also invest some in very high risk investments like um crypto or uh, uh or um cars or arts or, or like just extremely high risk investments they are willing to do that uh, but when risk is off the, mo the highest risk investments will be will get the most uh, the biggest beating and crypto will certainly be one of them so I think the short term risk here is indeed that the market, stock market gets a correction, but many, if that happens, people will start to think again that we will get a dot com bubble correction or a, a, a financial crisis a style of correction. And then this is extremely unlikely. Huh? Uh, also that banks would go broke again, and so, but this is all extremely unlikely because we just had that uh, only eight, year, eight years ago. We just had a decade of terrible uh, stock markets. So it will take probably another decade before we get another decade of terrible stock markets. So, so, so even if we get a, a short correction in stock market, and even though this is very likely to show in crypto markets too, it will be probably of short duration and after that stock market must continue to go up a lot and crypto markets too. Um, and so, but, but, but even in the short term, uh, there is a good chance for a correction, but it could equally well just continue to go up stock markets and so crypto markets as well. Huh? And so I would not be surprised at all to see. And also another thing I think very important is uh, Frank from Blue Magic Capital, he also thinks that we will see 40 to 50 thousand US dollars uh, in a Bitcoin valuation uh, this year or by the ha half of the year. And, 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 and many other millennials, people are in their 20s instead of 30s or 40s, are extremely bullish on crypto. And I've, I, 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 I value that also very highly because often the younger generation is actually better in touch with uh, society and where it's going than the older generation um, and uh, sadly i'm not part of the younger generation anymore uh, and, and and i like to see what they are thinking um, uh, also louis thomas uh, 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 that has been uh, 
uh, embracing Biteball as an investment and, and has such a, a big successful YouTube channel uh, and a lot of original uh, visions on crypto markets, uh, an extremely successful investor. Also saw Ethereum much more early on uh, invested in it, uh, done very well, is also bullish on the market, but also careful and takes out some money uh, from time to time. Uh, uh, but for the most part, it remains invested in crypto. I see this a lot uh, uh, with this younger generation. I think it's important to notice also. Um, so that's crypto. Uh, and, and for myself, uh, as I am telling always, I'm still learning to buy and hold. And I, and I apply this today too. Even though I sold some crypto, I went down from about 80% to 60% crypto exposure. That means I'm still, for the majority of my capital, invested in crypto today, even though eh, uh, there is a good chance for a continued correction. Uh, when it looks to my capital allocation, which is the most important thing uh, when you want to observe someone and judge how they really feel about the market, you have to look at how much they are invested in it. And for me, I'm still a majority investing in crypto, uh, meaning I have more confidence in the crypto market today compared to uh, half a year ago when uh, crypt, uh, Bitcoin was valued only at 3,000. I decided to go minority uh, crypto, uh, but later I, I recognized I was wrong at 5,000 and went to majority crypto again. I continue to be in a majority crypto. Uh, so other than cleaning up my portfolio, uh, I remain invested for the most part in crypto. And so it's only within the cryptocurrency market that I kick out some coins and then uh, those will go to some fiat uh, lock-ins. But, uh, but from, for the most part, I'm just investing in Byteball now in Bitcoin Cash. I really think these projects, even though fair valuation of these projects is too high, uh, Byteball, for example, is valued at, uh, it's just corrected quite a lot, but it's still valued at, let's say, 300 million US dollars. Uh, this is way too high uh, for the real adoption. But uh, markets don't function that way. Uh, every new market will be bid up. Uh, based on future expected future valuation not current valuation and so expected future valuation for a project like Byteball or Bitcoin Cash is much 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 higher than that if they are successful in capturing a piece of the cryptocurrency market so these valuations can continue to go up a lot even though real adoption is still extremely low um, and then there's uh, nuclear uh, nuclear energy and and I've learned a lot from the comments uh, I haven't done much research into the sector before I posted that video and and uh, and I'm so happy uh, with all the feedback because yeah indeed the current nuclear technology is really outdated and and, and I didn't know that but it's based on on the, on, on indeed the the, the the technology that was chosen uh, by using uranium uh, and, and having waste as a byproduct that can be used in nuclear weapons is not the best technology and was chosen by governments uh, in the 60s and 70s uh, because it, it was a combination of producing energy as well as producing strong weapons. Uh, but there are alternative technologies that actually don't create that waste even or technologies that can use that waste as a fuel huh? uh, and, and this is the promise of course of nuclear um, that that uh, the, 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 the technology if you invest in it uh, there can be uh, you can invest in technologies that are far better than what we're seeing currently on the market and this is just not the case with solar or wind energy. Uh, these, 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 these things have a very limited potential uh, when it comes to applying more innovations to them. Um, and, 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 and of course, it's difficult sometimes to judge. You, you can't really, as a, we are not scientists or mathematicians, to study all the uh, uh, efficiency and performance uh, analysis of these uh, energy um, uh, generators. But for me, uh, solar and wind seems very primitive. Uh, you're trying to catch the sun or catch the wind and then you convert it into energy. Well, you're gonna have, need a lot of equipment to do that. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, a it's a very limited amount of energy you get here. Eh? If you capture the sun, the amount of energy you capture is very limited. Eh? And the same with the wind. 
and so you need a lot a lot a lot of equipment that is all exposed to the elements and so it is extremely costly uh, and so even though these, these once it's installed you could say it's pre it's clean it's not generating waste but to create all that equipment and have to put new equipment there every five to ten years this is this this is the problem with these technologies um, and, and so nuclear mm, is a very different process where you have a chemical reaction or a create an, uh, basically uh, yeah it's basically you're, create, you're imitating the sun and eh? the sun is a continuous process of nuclear explosions and that's the source eh, of wind energy or, uh, or, or solar uh, energy is, is the sun but the sun is so far away but that's where the real power is and this we can recreate on planet Earth uh, with, 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 with nuclear. That's, that's, that's just amazing. And so, so you bring these elements together, you get nuclear reactions and explosions, and these are so powerful. Uh, and if you can capture only some of that energy, even if it's only 1%, this is still way, 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 way above what uh, wind or solar can capture. So, so that's the promise here. But of course, to find ways to invest in this, uh, it's, it's much more difficult um, and, 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 and but I think Bill Gates is a very interesting person to follow here he has uh, done a lot on, uh, on, on nuclear energy uh, you have to look for his interviews and uh, he's really on top of the most innovative uh, technologies there and, and I think it's breeder reactors uh, that they are uh, investing in for the most part so I'm, I'm going to continue to research that but so, uh, and something else I forgot uh, to say also about the commodity cycles, very interesting. So wh why do I think it's a great investment opportunity? But you have to be very careful and I don't think we've seen the bottom yet. Uh, we, don't, we haven't seen the bottom yet, I think, in, in, in for example, uranium, because the, the price right now is $20, the bottom was $10 in 2003. But uh, we need actually $10 in 2003 is the same as $20 today, because every 15 years, 5% inflation means that uh, the dollar amount will double, whereas that's still the, the, the same real value. So $10 2003 is $20 today. So the value of uranium, even though it's doubling in dollar price, actually the same price now as in 2003, and that was the low. So um, to have uh, today we have the same low, huh? and I think it's typical for commodities to always become cheaper over time, and so. Uh, the, it should be cut in half again to see a new low and so it should reach ten dollars again uranium and only then you can say okay it's now cheaper than it is, has ever been historically and that means that we've again achieved cheaper commodity prices uh, and, uh, and it's time to go back up now so that's why I think commodities are certainly not uh, or st can still go down a lot in value but we are, of course, much closer to a turn in this cycle. After eight years of, uh, seven years, uh, uh, gold also since 2011, but uranium also since 2008 have been going down in value. Um, and gold stock produced, uh, gold miners and uranium miners have taken a huge beating. So um, uh, this, I think, is a very good, interesting investment. Also, uh, the commodity cycle is just a simple cycle where um, um, uh, yeah, the prices go uh, up due to a shortage, then more and more producers start mining it. And so uh, uh, prices go up, producers are financially motivated to start producing again, and so you get much more production, and so, and prices go up, and so the, the consumers start to use less of it, and demand goes down a little because price goes up, uh, and at the same time supply goes up a lot because production goes up a lot and so you get an oversupply and prices start to correct again and this will take a long time this uh, period of oversupply uh, and, and so you you get these normal commodity cycles where you then have a long period of oversupply uh, and, and price continue to go down and then producers start to go broke and miners and so you get a reduction in supply while also more consumption because price continue to go down so people start to use more oil again or more more sugar or more uh, uh, n nuclear uh, uranium eh, because price continue to go down and so demand goes up again while supply goes down and at one point you get again a shortage eh? uh, and then the the cycle turns again 
uh, into favor of uh, commodity prices and, and so but you have to time this well uh, and you have to be extremely careful because in the long run commodities are an extremely bad investment they always go down in real purchasing power huh? so it's only over short periods of time that they go up a lot in price and value uh, but you have to be very careful there uh, because they always go down longer than the market expects because you always get real in, 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 as inflation adjusted dollars real inflation adjusted five percent per year you get always new lows so careful there but the nice thing about investing in a commodity cycle is that you're sure it's gonna turn around sooner or later and go back up a lot huh? so uh, that's why it's an interesting investment um, and then uh, what else do we have uh, I think these are the most interesting things um, so so I think uh, in summary um, it's most likely that stock markets and crypto markets will continue to go up in 2018 uh, which short corrections are possible but I think that just the general bull cycle uh, for stock markets will is another decade and so for 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 crypto also and so for commodities it's gonna continue to go down also and so this is still the cycle we're in and I think it's too soon to turn around and so that's why I'm invested for the majority still in the crypto markets but I'm also starting to uh, put some decent cash positions on the side and starting to study the uh, alternative investments for the next cycle which will be especially I think uh, commodity commodities and commodity related, related stocks I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video and this beautiful place in Valencia, Spain Bye